Hello, party people of the K West Chaos West stage. How are you guys doing? It is my honor to introduce to you a well-known man, known by the name of Dimi, who is presenting about a Android wallet, which has amazing features. Is that right, Dimi? Yes, that's right. Okay, amazing. the floor is all yours. Thank you. Privacy is a human, human right. And uh, Monero, I think, um, also stands for this, for this concept. And today I was asked to talk about Munoruyo, the Monero Android app that I made uh, in the beginning alone and then with a team of uh, designers around the world. So in the next 30 minutes, I will show you my journey. And in the end, we can have uh, some questions and answers. <clears throat> Open source software, I will be talking about. Uh, I have to press here as well. OK. <laughs> Open source software, what tools we use, the wallet itself, what kind of conversations there are about it, uh, what security issues may or may not be in it. Uh, then we have some presentation about the team behind Muneruyo, so you can see the real people. And our newest feature, the XMRTO integration, with, uh, with which you can pay bitcoins directly from the wallet using only Monero. <coughs> <coughs> Okay. Floss, free, libre, open source software. What does it mean for me? Well, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. It's open source. Everyone can look at it. Everyone can download the code, inspect it, see if they like it, see if they don't like it. And um, one thing I learned in this project, it also means very importantly, there are no obligations for the developers. I can do whatever I want, my team can do whatever we want, and I can stop at any time and leave because it's free. Open source software encourages collaboration because, well, the source is out there. Anyone can participate, so if you want to be part of this Monero movement, you can download Monero, install it, check it out. Anyone can fork it. Forking means you just make a copy of it and continue your own strain of whatever you are doing. I call this first part floss starting at zero because I had actually no previous experience with actually participating in an open source project. I have more than 30 years experience in software development and hardware development, but not, not, so, not so open. The first point I think is very important, and it's why I've managed to stay so long with this project. Let the project find you. Um, I started in this year, in the beginning of this year, looking at cryptocurrencies, what that's all about, researched for a month or so, and came up with, okay, Monero is me, and I am Monero. So I wanted to do have something there. The vision was, at that point, there was no, no mobile wallet for Monero, and the community simply needed one. So, what do you want to change? And uh, why do you want to change it? You should just know these things, otherwise you won't be able to get very far, I think. The how just happens later on. <coughs> Open source software is hosted publicly. In this case, the core is Monero itself, the Monero core. Uh, it's hosted on GitHub, which is uh, a Git repository, which is really, really horrible. I just watched a talk by Linus Torvalds the other day explaining what's behind Git. And his philosophy was, what would CVS not do? So dealing 20 years with CVS, that was a big problem for me. And you just can't change. It just takes time. 
You need to get the code running if you want to participate in such an open source software, of course. You need to set up your environment. Most instructions you find online are not complete. They would just not work for you. It, they do not work for me. It took several weeks to get everything set up and running. Read the code, understand the code structure, so you know where you can do stuff and where the, the voodoo happens. Don't, don't touch that. So I said, good, I will try this Android wallet. I have some spare time. Let's see what, what I can do out of it. <coughs> With the basic idea, if you build it, he will come. If you build it, they will use it. Or if they don't, then you can just stop at any point. So I did. At first, I did it for myself so I can have an Android app where I could use Monero. So I'm my own customer. For me, it's important to have uh, short, short implementation cycles where with every cycle, you have more functionality. You see that something is happening. It's pointless to have a three-year plan of, well, in three years, we will have an Android wallet. It just won't happen ever. So um, that's the one thing. The other thing is I wanted to be the first. And I did not believe that's possible because everyone was working on the Android wallet. Well. They still are working on the Android wallet. <clears throat> and of course, you can also post it into the internet, uh, post it into, I use mostly Reddit for, for information, and to see what the community thinks of it. It's the crypto world, everyone is paranoid, but somehow it, it worked out. Um, accept all input means, and be open, the next point. Assume everyone involved is just smarter than you, because they are. So accept everything they tell you, and evaluate it, discuss it, and you can do whatever you want anyway. <clears throat> Try to avoid adding new functions for a cycle. So if you say, okay, well, I want to release every two weeks, decide, okay, what is it I want to release? What new function is there? Is it two th weeks? Maybe it's three weeks, but just stick to the functions and don't say, oh, but this is also cool. I will add that. That's a, uh, well, or you will never finish. And if there are really big functions where you need a couple of months, then just break it down into smaller blocks, which is nearly always possible because there are always small functional blocks you can, you can add. Implement deploying parts, yeah. So if it's good, if it's good, then others will join. They can see that something's happening. It's worth, it's worth the time. <clears throat> so others will join the project. They will either submit changes to GitHub, contact via email, Reddit, whatever. And say, I want to be part of this. I want to add design to this. Uh, my design in the beginning was, some say crap. It was functional. It worked. It was dark. The current theme burns your eyes when you look at it, but OK. Um, so it was important for me to get the function running and then to talk to the designers. So after the first release, which had covered all the basic functionality, I got involved with some designers who were already lined up and said, <coughs> and said OK, let's do something to the, together. In order for such a team to work, I said, later on, I've got a. Um, an introduction to the team. It's around the world, from Australia to Argentina. <coughs> Sorry. You need a common language, which in our case is English. Uh, you need a common and clear vision. Everyone has to be on the same page, especially since you are around the globe with different time zones. You need to be stepping in the same direction, all of you at the same time. Clear communication structures, how do we communicate? How do we get a message across? What is important for us? Clear responsibilities. If you're all in the room, then it can be chaos, and at the end of the day, it will be fine. If you're not in a room, it will be chaos. So uh, you won't get anything done, I think. So it's pretty clear who does what, what they're responsible for. It's in OK if the responsibilities are not perfectly defined, but it should also be clear that they're not perfectly defined. 
So who does the help file as well? Whoever wants to do the help files because no one wants to do help files, for example. Uh, coding style and approach to coding is, is important for me as a coder. I had some people talking about coding in there and it, some of them just did not fit to my way of reading code. Maybe my re way of reading and writing code is crap, but it's my way and it just needs to fit. So I found uh, luckily a guy who's exactly in my, in my direction. I look at, at, at this code and said, okay, this is, this is, this is good. Also, of course, you need uh, task management, especially, again, if you're a diverse team. Uh, we use a Kanban system. I've got a couple of screenshots later how we use that. Then there's the fight, the war between designers and developers. I want the stuff to work. They want it to look good. So. Um, and it's difficult to make it look good. So what we've come to an understanding, which was from the beginning, is that the form follows the function. We want it to work, and it should look sexy in doing that. So that was our approach. Uh, we had a couple of designs, and basically just mock-ups of how the thing should look. I implemented it the way that I interpreted it. Uh, they were mostly different from what the mock-ups were, but it was the idea of what it should look like and that's what it looks like and that were, that's what it does. So it's important to say what matters, what matters for the whole team, what is important for this project and what is, what is not so important. And again, let the deadline dictate the scope. If you've got a deadline in one week, there's no point in putting one month of, of work into it. Say, okay, we'll do this now and we can put the rest on the backlog and uh, things disappear from the backlog mysteriously because it turns out they were not important in the first place. Not everything disappears. And then there's the support issue. I made a screenshot of a thing I got a couple of days ago. I wanted to use, hello, I wanted to use your wallet to store my Moneroi, so I did. I can no longer access my wallet or see the balance. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? So, of course, you need to deal with, with these kind of support things as well in a normal, cordial manner. Please give me more information. What, what is it you want to be trying to do? And that kind of stuff. This should not be ignored. Of course, I can tell this person, well, don't use the wallet, but it's not the idea of, of, the, of the community. Okay, what tools do we use? Um, I have to use this. Tools. We have some collaboration tools. We use the Taiga, which is provided by the Monero project. There we do uh, Kanban tasks, which we shuffle around the team. The Taiga we use for, for uh, the project is a public tiger so anyone can actually see what's on our backlog, what are we working on, what's done, what is ready to be tested. And we use Mattermost, it's a sort of like Slack or IRC or some communication thing which we use a lot. Um, only, only text and only typing but of course posting screenshots and videos so if I like change something I like keep posting videos, what does it look like now? And they're like, this is too small, this is too big, it's not round, it's that kind of stuff. So it's pretty good and you get immediate feedback. <coughs> code repository, our code is also on GitHub. And for the design, we, we use a website called Envision where you could do mock-ups of, uh, of, 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 um, of apps. I've got a screenshot soon. This is what the tiger looks like, if I press this button. Okay. Basically, you have tasks which short, with a short description of what the task is. Um, for example, the second one up there is a dark theme, so you don't get blind every time you use the app. The second column is ready, in progress, ready for test and done, and when you move the status, you just move the card across, 
you can also like ask questions and answers and uh, basically everyone knows what, what's going on. The next uh, slide is how we design, design the, the screens. This is a, a screen of what um, the XMRTO integration looks like or would have looked like if I had implemented it that way. <coughs> it's pretty great because you see what colors are used. Uh, you can measure, you see the measurements of the screens, so you can try to approximate that, or appro approximate that when you're implementing. <coughs> what we did from the very beginning, from day one, we had a, we had a Jure fix. Every Monday, the whole team, except Australian because he's asleep, we, we meet for one, two or three hours sometimes in the, in the matter most and talk about what have we done, how far are we, what do we continue doing. Uh, what are, we talk about the screenshots, about the layout, about we draw funny pictures and have fun generally and talk about uh, what is the social distance between people in Argentina in comparison to Sweden. So uh, all kinds of fun stuff. Sometimes we prepare an agenda if we have a lot, lot of points that we want to cover. And this always takes place also if someone's not there. And this is very important, I think, because it just keeps the project running. If we say, oh, he's not here or I have no topics, then it just slows down and, and you, can, you can forget it, I think. Uh, a lot of throwing ideas at the wall. That's how the team works. This is how I work. That's why I said we fit pretty well together. You just throw things out and people tell you to shut up or, oh, this is great, let's try it, try it uh, that way. Keyboard, I said we only type. We don't have any video stuff yet. I don't know if we need it. And a lot of screenshots, uh, painting on screenshots. This InVision actually allows you to uh, paint in, in the web interface and the other people um, that are also watching this see these changes. So it's uh, very, very interactive. <clears throat> OK, the wallet. Notice the fantastic, fantastic uh, guy with the Monero jacket there. He's called Gunther. He's Gunther from Argentina. It's not me. Someone asked me today, is it you? No, it's not me. I just wear him. Okay. Uh, technical challenges for the actual, well, wallet. Setting up an environment. I said that's sort of difficult. It's easy when you know how. So I've documented exactly what you have to do. Luckily, my hard disk crashed completely. Everything was lost. So I had to do everything from the beginning. So I documented that. I'd missed, of course, a couple of steps in the first round. So now... If you go to the GitHub repository, you can do it yourself, and it will probably not work for you. Compile the Monero code for Android. This had already been done. Uh, thank you, Hick. And uh, a lot of, a lot, some compiling war warnings, which you have to check. Are they applicable? Is it something important, or is it just, well, uh, noise? And some errors there were as well to do with, uh, with the Android development kit that I was using. And the prerequisites, of course, a lot of projects have a lot of uh, dependencies and prerequisites. You need to get those compiled on the Android as well. The biggest problem here was the open SSL, which most people try to copy it from the phone and use the Google uh, libraries, uh, the Google source code for that. That did not work at all. For me, I compiled it completely from, from source code. It turned out to be a matter of two hours, and uh, it's, it's fine. <clears throat> the biggest problem and, and the biggest technological challenge was to Android program in Java as a language, and the Monero code, the Monero core, is a C, C++ DLL, and you need to connect those two, and that uh, does a lot of threading as well, so you need to use threading in both directions, and to get that working without having memory leaks is a, is a bit of a challenge, so 
that challenge has been solved. We haven't had a, a memory problem in at least six months. So I managed to get, get that running. And of course, the, all the Android concepts. I had written an app for Android maybe 10 years ago where there was, everything was different. So I was learning everything completely, completely new about services, permissions, threadings, uh, threading, which is only available, available since Android 5. So uh, that's why the lowest uh, Android support is Android 5. The API, which keeps changing between Android versions and between Monero versions to like deal with that. You compile it again and like nothing works. And um, the emulator is quite uh, cumbersome. So I gave up using that quite soon and, and debug everything on the device. But I only have one device with Android 7. So uh, from time to time, I need to start it up, wait for half an hour for it to do something. And as I said, dealing with new versions of Monero core, there's a testnet mainnet. We had a couple of discussions today about that, that this needs to change if you want to have more stuff integrated to Monero, because right now the testnet is actually the development version, really the cutting edge version, and there's nothing you can test the current production version with. So you actually have to spend real Monero to like try stuff out, and we don't have that. Some security aspects which keep coming up in, in different Reddit threads and on GitHub as well. <coughs> Where to sto store the wallet files. In Android, there's a sort of sandbox environment for every app, which is internal storage, if you will. And there's the external storage where every other app has access. So if you store the wallet files on the external storage, every other app has access, and people say, ooh, uh, every other app, app has access to my wallet files. Yes, they do. They also, every other app you have on your PC also has access to your wallet files. So um, there's that. If you store it on the internal storage, no other app has access to this internal storage, so you cannot back up your wallet files, for example. Plus. I'm sure this can be hacked, and good hackers will get into your internal storage, and you think that you're safe, especially if your phone is rooted. So it depends what you want to do. We decided to go for the external storage location with, uh, well, with the side effects that other apps have access to your wallet files, like in other operating systems. Basically, I think the problem is that people are lazy to enter good passwords in, on an Android device. If you have a good password, it doesn't matter where your wallet is stored. The other thing is, I want to delete wallet files. Yes, I understand that. There's no deleting of wallet files as such there, because I cannot guarantee that if I erase something from an SD card, someone can take the SD card and do undelete. Secure deleting is a, is a science of its own. Uh, so we can't tell you, okay, I've deleted your wallet and be, you're sure, uh, you're safe you are not safe, so we don't even try to do that. If you want to do that, you need to find an app which deletes everything on the, on the, on the device. Okay, <clears throat> password entry, there's always how to enter the passwords. Do you want to have an increased interval? Always, if you type a wrong password, I think we'll be going in that direction. Uh, is there a, a kill switch? Is there a password which deletes all your wallets? Again, we get into the delete problems because when the uh, TSA agents take off your phone and you type in the wrong password, they will take your SD card out and they will recover your, your wallet. So it doesn't it does really matter. Um, that's the destroying of the wallets, of course. Yeah. Then there's the fingerprint. Fingerprint is on the next slide. We want to use fingerprints as passwords. We've also decided not to do that because uh, no one can, except Guantanamo, can get a password out of you and a fingerprint anyone with a knife has no problems in, in dealing with this problem. So uh, we are leaving it at a password. Just pick a good password and you will have no problems, I think. 
Then there's the idea of proof of writing down, where we need to force people to write down their mnemonic seed the way that is or should be done for all wallets. Keep your seed, keep your password, uh, keep your, keep your uh, private key safe in multiple locations. And uh, we, the hardware wallets do that. They actually make you repeat the mnemonic seed after they have dictated it to you to make sure that, they, that you actually have this. We might do something like this, I don't know. We've prevented screenshots to prevent other apps just from screenshotting whatever you're doing on your phone. I understand that most banking apps, if not all banking apps, apps also do this for the same reasons. So we decided to do this as well. It's a bit of a bummer for support because I can't tell people, well, send me a screenshot of what doesn't work. So maybe we need to reevaluate this, this decision. Uh, some people are saying, oh, but you're using the exchange, exchange rate from Kraken and that doesn't work well with Tor and we want something else. Yes, uh, maybe we want to talk about this. Also, of course, as soon as you call up an exchange rate from somewhere, they know that you're doing something and they know where you're doing it from. So maybe if you're paranoid, don't exchange rate like this. And the TOR, Tor integration, uh, I've never tried it actually. I understand that it works in, with Tor and VPN mode, so I don't think we'll be doing anything in that direction. Apart from that, Monero is doing its own Covery, which is a secure, secure um, transport layer anyway. <coughs> the team, look, two people. Um, a bit of a social slide. I've, I've spoken about most of this already. No one is paid. Everyone's doing it for fun. Everyone's doing it for free, out of conviction, because we all believe Monero is a, is a, is a good thing for our society. Uh, there's no obligation to deliver, so it's a, it's a completely different uh, way to work when you expect people in, on the team to deliver, but they don't have to. So you, you really have to fit together with, with the way you work with them. Uh, in both directions, of course. There are no customers, again, because there's no money flow. They're consumers. And the consumers are not used to being treated like not customers. Yeah, so this is also an, a social aspect. It's all based on respect. And the Monero community is, is really great. Um, I was told to, to point to the Monero cat down here. Very important with this movement. Okay, Monero cat, got it. Uh, Close-knit community and you get support, you can talk about things, it's very, it's very amicable. Our team, <clears throat> if it comes up, are uh, six people. So it started out with me, then we got uh, Rera, who does the website, he's uh, reworked the Get Monero website now as well, I think. Uh, Baltzar, who does the user interface. Andre is also user interface, and he did the, the cool uh, Gunter guys. KeyJF, everyone needs a kangaroo fighter in Australia, so we have one. And we have this uh, second developer in, in Germany, as I said. <coughs> Spread around the world, so we have a bit of a time zone problem, so that's uh, an advantage of Mattermost when we discuss, uh, when the left side of the, of the slide discusses things, the right side can read it then later and comment on it in, in, in block. A short introduction maybe of everyone. Me, I've been doing everything from embedded systems to you name it. Uh, the second point is more important, crypto annoyance to all my acquaintances, colleagues, family, and everyone else. I keep bugging about it. I can't stop talking about anything else. Uh, I don't do anything else either. And uh, yeah, developing, making music, and uh, well, reading code. We decided this is the most funny, funny picture in the whole presentation. So this is the, the Swedish designer who's, uh, well, does all the designing, of course. And uh, at night he does Munero and other stuff. What did he write? He says uh, he, he puts on his suit and designs stuff for Munero. 
he exactly in the beginning he said oh, I have maybe one or two hours per week to to spend on this project and then it turns out I think he spends more like 10 15 hours so it's it's quite a lot of of work also during the week um, <clears throat> ah, okay Yeah, why Monero? I also asked everyone, like, why, why are we doing this? And basically, it's, it's all the same reason that uh, it's political and social developments that, that we want to support with this project. <clears throat> Fernandez Cordon. Andres Fernandez Cordon. Oh, I think I said it right now. Um, a long time, you see it, illustrator and filmmaker. He has, uh, he's a co-founder, creator, creative director at Sloop, which is a, a creative animation studio. He does all the cool, cool stuff with, uh, well, this kind of thing. And um, he's also a crypto annoyance to his acquaintances and loves railways and time travel movies and hard cheese and wine. The, why, is he still, why is he still with us? Because we immediately made him feel part of the team and uh, it's just such a great, great team to work, to work with. I think his other statements here, I think lack of privacy leads to coercion. A dre I dream of a world where incentives are so well implemented there's no need for violence. Of course, this is utopia, but this is where we want to go. And uh, Monero is a step in this, in this direction, so that's why we're there. Key Jeff, who uh, also does not only a, a kangaroo fighter, but uh, also user, user interface and help files, uh, is still studying and he's helping us, uh, well, get our English straight because he's the only native speaker. Um, he was, I think, one of the first people who contacted me uh, to fix my English and uh, yeah and then we have a, a real Android developer a professional Android developer to help us uh, especially also with testing so we have a bit of some testing framework in there by far not enough it's just one drop of on a huge fireplace but we're we're starting there yeah and uh, yeah, Monero needs a good Android wallet. Okay, that's the team. Just a short uh, timeline. <clears throat> of our newest feature maybe to understand the way that we, we work. We had, um, I, I looked up these dates, it's pretty fast, so 6th of November. We had a first uh, contact to the XMRTO guys. They said, okay, well, do we want to do this? How do we want to do this? Then uh, talked to this with my team. On the 9th of November, we said, okay, we'll do this. In order to do this, though, we had to restructure the whole sending workflow in order to convert. Uh, we had one screen where you could send Monero. And we needed a couple of things in order to send Monero because in, the, in between sending Monero and receiving Bitcoin, we needed to uh, access an online service, the XMRTO, in order to, to get exchange rates and create orders and query orders and stuff like that. So you see from 9th of November to 15th of December is a long time, it's a month. But in between that, we restructured the send workflow and that was one update to the app. So we had took two weeks, or maybe three weeks, I don't know now. And uh, we had already set a date. We wanted to present this at the Monero meetup in Vienna on the 15th of December. So after two weeks, we made one version with a new send flow, see if it works. It's pretty fantastic. And then two weeks later, we got this thing actually working and we showed it to the guys at the Monero meetup with the XMRTO integration. And now a couple of days ago, we redid the, the user interface, so it now looks really fantastic. And uh, since, well, since 24th, uh, since Christmas, we have it in a public beta, so everyone, anyone can register and uh, 
to stuff. I think that's it. And, and the, the logo is just really cool. Okay, this is the Mortal Kombat Gunther. So, and this is the, we'll code for XMR Gunther. Uh, yes, you had a question. But there's the microphone, I think, is coming to you. <coughs> okay. <laughs> A little applause to Dimi, please. Well done. Thank you. Um, it has become a tradition that I first ask three questions to Dimi and you just recap all the amazing input that you got and then the QA is later, but okay. let me be first. Is that okay? Sure. So this was about the Android app and um, you have two UX developers, UX UI, yeah. and you have two real developers. Yeah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Okay, is that enough developers or is that enough UXs? Well, well, I think the mix is, is pretty good. I'm the main one doing the, the developing. The second guy is helping me when, when, I, when I need help or when he has ideas. And the two um, interface designers are, are, I think they're enough. Otherwise it will be more of a, more of a mess. But <laughs> I have no experience, so maybe, I don't think, I don't, it's not, more is not always better. I thought it was very interesting to, to see how a, a project really works, an, a free floss project from people around the world. Um, thank you for showing the tools. But how high is the test coverage? The test coverage, I have no idea. <laughs> so um, who's doing QA or so? No one is doing QA as an, as an, official, as an official task. We're all testing it, but uh, uh, it's not real testing. It's more trying things out. And the second developer, I'm hoping that we can actually get instrumentation tests and actually have a number for, for code coverage. Yeah, so that's one of the next steps in, in, in actually having a QA, which is real QA and not trying stuff out, yeah. Last question in the hot seat. Um, what was it? I forgot. <laughs> Uh, where will I find you when I remember the question? I'm um, back there with the Monero guys. <laughs> okay, then. You're lucky. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I will now go down to the stage with my microphone and you come with your questions. You can also enter the stage, but be aware, you will then be uh, on screen and then maybe someday, uh, someday in the internet. But I, 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 thought some, I saw some questions. Just, just come here and join me and ask Dimi your questions now. Is that a question? Hello. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, very inspiring. I was wondering if you know about the F-Droid uh, Android App Store and whether you have plans to publish your app on F-Droid. Yes, that's a good question. It's a question which comes up uh, a lot. I understand also why. Uh, uh, there are no plans as such. I tried to do it, but I gave up after a couple of hours when I could not get the F-Droid stuff running on my system and decided that functionality is more important than getting it on there. Uh, that was a couple of months ago. The functionality is, is pretty far. And yes, we want to get it on F-Droid. And yes, we're looking for someone who actually can do stuff on F-Droid and understands how to, how to, how to make the stuff work. Um, we may be able to do it here. One idea was to actually do it here, the Monero assembly, to get people working and uh, at least getting it to compile in, that, in the F-Droid ecosystem. So yes, uh, a plan is something with a date. So no, we don't have a plan, but we really want to do it. Right. Another question. Uh, I have two questions. Um, why do you think has the official team not released any official Android wallet yet? 
And the second question is, um, do you plan to support any real light wallet protocol, like the Open, open Monero backend, which is uh, supporting real light wallets instead of remote, using remote nodes? Uh, the first one, it would be speculation. I have no idea. I have no contact to them. I have no, I have read probably less than you have read about why they're not getting further. I don't know. Um, the second question, integration to a, or talking to a light wallet, the, the protocol is completely different. The functionality is completely different. So no, we want to be a, a real standalone client where your keys are on your phone. You have wallet files which you can exchange with your PC. So the, the wallet files you create on your PC or Mac or whatever you have, uh, Linux, you can actually copy them to your Android phone and they will work there just like they did on your PC. And that's where we want to stay. So it's a standalone thing. Yes, you need a remote node. Yes, the remote nodes are very flaky. They don't, well, mostly don't work a lot. Uh, but a lot of the time they do. And uh, we need... I think a solution to this problem is to have better instructions on how actually to run your own node because it's very simple when you know what to type. It's, it's, it's so simple. But I had a, a stupid conversation with, uh, on Reddit, uh, no, on IRC, that there's no instructions how to run your node. So they sent me 20 links. But you have to combine these 20 links in a week to get the one command you need to run. So uh, maybe we can make that easier. <clears throat> I have one question. Um, I have a big problem with the iOS X wallet. Um, wallet. They are charging a fee on top of the Monero fee. So I want to ask you if you can uh, swear to us that uh, this uh, that your project your project will never be uh, start any type of monetizing. That's a trick question. Never say never. Uh, I don't want to answer that. No, I've never had the idea to do that. The idea is it will be free forever, but this might change in the future. I have absolutely no idea because I'll, yeah, I, yeah. There's no, there's no idea to, to actually monetize on this, no. Okay, thank you very much, Dimi. Oh, some tough questions to answer. Uh, remember to, uh, my third question. What ah. do you know about the, uh, the actual Monero users? Um, How many? We have, Where do they uh, live? What do they do with it? We, I don't have direct contact with the Monero users. Uh, we have feedback with, in mails, on, on forums, on Reddit. Uh, we try to solve all problems, which are mostly related to nodes, so I understand the, the, this thing. Uh, we, have, uh, alpha we have about 12, I think, alpha testers. We have about five or 600 beta testers. And the app is installed on about uh, 5,500 devices, active devices, so that's quite something. And since we don't get a lot of feedback, usually feedback is more negative, uh, I think it's, it's, it's running well. And the feedback we do get is, is positive. So um, I'm happy for that, yeah. <laughs> okay, Demi. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for your attention. I would also uh, like to thank the, the amazing people of my team in the, in the back, making all this possible. <laughs> so when you're up here on stage and you you're put in the hot seat. Dimi is the fourth person who survived it. You may <laughs> like me, you may not like me, but my team is more than happy to take your presentation and then you can stand here just like Dimi and all the other great people. Um, show your project, show your love and have a great time on the Congress. This stage is for us, it's for, for all of us on the Congress. So please send me or my, my team or the team basically um, your papers. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs>